What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Fallout Boy record, Mania, out last Friday, January 19th. Ah, Fallout Boy. What a, what a classic textbook case of band comes out, explodes with a couple genre-defining records that endear them to a legion of hardcore fans. Then a couple years go by and, and band decides, you know what? We want to experiment with our sound a little bit. And this new sound of ours, it may or may not have a much wider commercial appeal than the style that initially won our fans over. And as if on cue, Fall Out Boy does just that, hardcore fan base loses their shit, and now every internet argument from here on out features some combination of words like sellout or evolution and experimentation, depending on what side of the fence you're on. It's happened to countless bands. This trajectory is nothing new. And contrary to what you might hear, there's nothing inherently wrong with evolving and changing your sound, regardless of what the motive is even, whether it's purely creative or it's money or whatever. Because as this transition happens, the only relevant question is the question that's always been there. Is the music good? That's all that ever matters. And that's still true whether a death metal band starts playing disco or a harp player starts rapping. Is the music good? So the position that Fall Out Boy currently find themselves in is more or less what I described. Here we are at album number seven for the band and the music they're making is such a far cry from that emo pop punk crossover sound that made them famous. The best way to describe this, this new album Mania is it's like the corner bodega where Pop Avenue and kinda sorta still barely rock music lane meet up. People are upset about that, I guess. But you know what? You guys are gonna get a unique perspective from me on this record. You are. Because to be honest, I haven't felt invested in Fall Out Boy's music in many, many years. And because of that, there's no room here for me to be a butthurt fan. I'm more just like approaching this record from a, a casual and curious perspective. Whereas by contrast, a lot of what you'll hear about this album are from Fall Out Boy fans, from people who have a lot invested in this band and have a lot more emotional well-being at stake here based on this new record. Me, on the other hand, I'm watching people lose their minds about Fall Out Boy selling out. And I'm thinking to myself, like, who cares if, if Fall Out Boy want to make slightly poppier music? Like, like, what are we sitting here going, man, back in the day, Fall Out Boy was the hardest shit ever. Like, no, I, I never came to Fall Out Boy for super aggressive or conceptual or esoteric music. So, like, if they want to do something a little bit poppier than what they usually do, it's no skin off my back. As, as long as the tunes are good, I could give less of a shit. Now, all that context being set up, let's dive right into my thoughts on this album. And we'll start with the number one reason that it's so polarizing, which is the stylistic adventures that take place on this record. The band bring in a lot of electronic influences, dance music influences, reggae on one track, just a lot of shit that has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with rock music or alternative music. And I'm sure for a lot of people, the, the results of these experiments are disastrous across the board. But for me, they're more mixed. I will immediately hop on board with the haters when it comes to the album opener and lead single Young and Menace, which is just fucking atrocious. It, the band basically attempt to I'm sure you've all heard it, but the band basically attempt to bring an edgy dose of EDM to their sound. And the chorus is this cacophonous, sort of off-tilt drop with pitched-up chipmunk vocals and 808 hi-hats and the, the whole nine. It's just so ill-advised and it's so hard on the ears, as is, for different reasons, the interpolation of Britney Spears in the verses. Why the band saw fit to open this record with a single that is now nine months old and just not liked by 90% of their audience, it beats me. So, so that's, a, that's a stylistic misstep that occurs right away on this album. And then later on, the other huge bummer for me is that fucking reggae attempt on the track Sunshine Riptide. It's, it's done in collaboration with the Nigerian artist Burna Boy, and when he shows up, this pairing just feels so fucking forced. But to be fair, not that it would have saved this snooze fest of a song anyway, even, even if it went well, because the hook to this song, it's about as much fun as an ER waiting room. So yeah, there's definitely instances on Mania where Fall Out Boy take a, a stylistic leap right into a brick wall. <laughs> But you know what? There's also moments like Hold Me Tight or Don't where it kind of pays off. Like, for my money at least, I think the, the tropical dance sound of this song like weirdly fits with frontman Patrick Stump's downtrodden sass. And the hook is so addicting with his rapid fire vocal delivery as well as all the shit that's going on behind him. It's this interesting blend of synthesizers, some electric guitars way back in the mix, and then whatever the hell is 
is playing that syncopated chord progression. I can't tell if it's like a, it's a guitar sample or, or a steel drum. It's really far back there, but once I noticed it, I, I couldn't take my ears off it. So who knew that song would have worked, right? But it does, and I, I think it's partly the irony between like this upbeat, happy-go-lucky dance groove and the, the mopey relationship shit that Patrick Stump is singing about. But I will say, the, the one huge downside of all this electronic shit going on is the guitars on this record are really fucking sparse. And it wouldn't bother me so much if I didn't hear all this space for them in these arrangements. Seriously, there are countless spots on Mania where my musical instincts tell me that it would have helped in various situations to, to toss in some crunchy rock guitars, to beef up the sound a little bit and make this record not feel like it was produced like a full-on pop album. It bothers the shit out of me, especially because when the occasional rock guitar does show up, like in the song Stay Frosty Royal Milk Tea, whether it's the, the main riff or the really cool lead guitars in the bridge section, when they do show up, they feel like such a breath of fresh air. It feels like I'm coming up to the surface after almost drowning in studio tricks. You do hear the guitars if you listen closely to songs like Homie Tighter Don't, or the closing ballad Bishop's Knife Trick, or the song Wilson, where the band do an especially good job of using these clean guitars to fill out the mix. But still, man, there's a lot of the time there's just so much room for some nice rock guitar that's just not being used, and it is a damn shame. On the bright side, though, the lack of guitars on this record do make room for some pretty great bass songs for Pete Wentz. Love his bass line during Sunshine Riptide when Burna Boy shows up, and the bass during the verses of the song Church. It really, they really pop out. That's the silver lining, I guess. One thing I will give Fall Out Boy credit for, something they have always done well and they continue to do well on this record, is come up with these quirky, witty, ultra quotable lyrics that they're over the top and they make you chuckle, but because they're over the top and they make you chuckle, they really stick with you. Like some examples include on, on Stay Frosty, they'll know my life was just a killer dream. On Wilson, of course, I'll stop wearing black when they make a darker color. Like how is that not gonna go on a t-shirt? And then my personal favorite in the song, Last of the Real Ones, I wonder if your therapist knows everything about me. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Which Last of the Real Ones is easily the best song on here. Super high energy, super quotable again, which I think will make it a fantastic live sing along. And you know what? It's really nice to hear some actual fucking guitars in this song, like throughout. I think they give it a real kick in the ass and prove my point that more prominent guitars would have spiced up other parts of this record. And Bishop's Knife Trick, that's another winner that I should mention. The band really pulled off a huge stadium ballad to close out this album. Patrick Stump really flexes his vocal range on this one. There's another quotable with uh, spiritual revolt from the waist down. And there's also some, some genuinely sentimental vibes here too. You know, the, the clean guitars and the piano are a really sweet balance for one another before the before at least the song sort of fills out. I just don't hear the mess or the disaster that everyone else seems to be hearing with this record. It's fine, it's not particularly good either, because you see, what I've described so far are the outliers on both ends. There's a couple tracks I love, a couple tracks I hate, but the reality of this record is, what's filling in most of all that space there that we haven't even discussed is just tracks like Church and Champion and Heaven's Gate, which are just super average, you know? You don't necessarily want to hear them again. You don't mind them though. They're just kind of there. And if I were to break down Mania super bluntly, it's really as simple as this. There's a 10 song track list. On this 10 song track list, there's exactly five songs that I enjoy and plan on returning to. Stay Frosty, Homie Tighter Don't, Last of the Real Ones, Wilson, Bishop Snipe Trick. The other five songs, they get the X. It's really that simple. So where that leaves me with Mania, if you can do basic math, is like an average album, right down the middle. There's no need to be all up in arms about this. It's not particularly good either, but it's fine. Which, hey, that's actually a noted uptick from where I thought I'd be with this album, just based on what other people were saying and based on me. So, you know what, in, in a way, this was like a pleasant surprise, I guess. Mania gets a five out of 10 from me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I will see you guys soon.